It's difficult to argue about the popularity of Ethereum. Launched in 2014, Ethereum quickly became a home for decentralized apps, smart contracts, NFTs and more. Ethereum is so popular in fact, that it has actually become a problem. Heavy traffic can congest the network, slow transaction times, and frustrate both users and developers. On a mission to excel in those areas that Ethereum is lacking, the Flow blockchain was built to host the next generation of apps, NFTs, and games. And in today's video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about this revolutionary blockchain. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into the Flow blockchain. We'll examine everything you need to know about this popular project including the problems it hopes to solve, and the unique features that set it apart from the rest. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Introduced in 2019, the Flow blockchain was created by Dapper Labs, the enterprise behind popular NFT projects like CryptoKitties and NBA Top Shot. Ironically, it was the popularity of CryptoKitties that led to the creation of Flow. CryptoKitties was one of the first NFT projects launched on the Ethereum blockchain back in 2017. The project was so popular that it created an enormous amount of traffic, and as congestion built, it essentially crashed the Ethereum blockchain. Rather than finding a new home for CryptoKitties, Dapper Labs set out to create their own blockchain, one that could handle the large-scale demands of popular NFT projects, apps, games, and more. As a result, the Flow blockchain was born. Flow was designed to handle extensive scaling without the use of sharding, a process we will discuss shortly. While most blockchains have their own unique features and benefits, there's one thing that they all have in common. Known as a consensus mechanism, they must all have a process to verify transactions and secure the network. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum utilize what is known as the proof-of-work consensus mechanism. While it gets the job done, it has significant scalability issues. These issues have led to the rise of Layer 2 solutions that seek to process transactions off-chain in order to increase speed and reduce fees. Flow however, has a unique approach in that they split transaction processing into four nodes, each with their own roles and responsibilities. Flow's native node subdivisions provides an advantage when it comes to issues of blockchain scalability. Let's dive a little bit deeper into Flow's unique features starting with their multi-node architecture. With typical blockchains, each node holds the full state, such as smart contract codes, account balances, and so on, and is tasked with performing the work of processing every transaction on the chain. This is highly inefficient. Flow likens the process to having a single worker build an entire car. Flow's solution to this problem is to split the jobs of validator nodes into four roles. Those roles are collection, consensus, execution, and verification. Every validator node continues to participate in the validation of every transaction, but only at one of the stages. As a result, they can specialize in and greatly improve the effectiveness of their specific stage of focus. This approach allows higher throughput by the thousands and cheaper costs. Collection nodes are the first layer of Flow's node architecture and have a primary responsibility to handle the transaction's pool. Once completed, the transactions are sent to the consensus nodes. As its name implies, the consensus nodes allow the network to reach consensus on the transactions. Execution nodes then execute the transactions which are validated by the verification nodes. In using a multi-node architecture, Flow avoids sharding, which is the preferred method of lowering the workload for nodes and increasing transaction throughput. Sharding involves splitting a blockchain into multiple pieces, or shards, and storing them in different places. Flow developers, however, believe that sharding has its own shortcomings. In particular, they believe that sharding decreases composability, or the ability of smart contract developers to build on each other's work. There is also a belief that sharding introduces unwanted complexity due to the need for synchronization between shard chains. As a result, developing smart contract-driven apps can become more challenging. In creating Flow, the founders wanted to put developers first. 
This approach, known as results-oriented programming, led to the creation of a new programming language known as Cadence. Cadence was developed to help new programmers get started and experienced developers create exciting and innovative projects. Cadence is flexible and encourages a new approach for developing digital assets. Another unique feature involves the ability to upgrade smart contracts. On a typical blockchain, such as Ethereum, once a smart contract is uploaded, it is immutable. It cannot be modified, even if there are bugs or additions to be made. Flow takes a different approach to smart contracts. Rather than being uploaded in their final, immutable form, Flow allows developers to upload smart contracts to the mainnet in a beta state. Doing so allows developers to observe the smart contract, ensuring that everything works correctly, before submitting it into its final, immutable form. And lastly, Flow was designed to have consumer-friendly onboarding. It was designed for mainstream consumers and offers a safe, frictionless path from fiat currencies to cryptos with payment on-ramps. Two elements contribute to the approach of consumer-friendly onboarding. The first of these is human-readable security. Apps and wallets do not offer human-readable messages that outline the permissions offered during the authorization of a transaction. With the flow transaction format however, strong guarantees are made about what kinds of changes a transaction can or cannot make. This creates a more transparent approval process by helping users to make informed decisions about what they are approving. And secondly, smart user accounts. Amongst other things, smart user accounts help to ensure that there are no more lost keys. Flow hopes to ensure a good user experience through automated processes and more sophisticated authorization controls. Through the use of secure account recovery flows, decentralized apps can ensure that consumers never lose their assets or access to their accounts. The native token of Flow serves a few different purposes. First, like many other projects out there, it serves as fuel. In order to settle a transaction, users are required to pay either a computation fee or a processing fee. The Flow token is used to satisfy this payment. Secondly, Flow can be used to earn staking rewards. Along with its multi-node architecture, Flow uses the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. As such, users that are able to stake the minimum amount of Flow tokens can become a Flow validator and earn Flow staking rewards in the process. Becoming a Flow validator to stake is not required though. Users can delegate their stake and still earn Flow tokens, but will need to pay a small portion of the rewards to the validator that the user delegates to. Lastly, Flow can be used as a governance token. Through governance, holders will be able to push through improvement proposals, ecosystem decisions, protocol parameters, and protocol upgrades. And that's all that we have for today's video. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of the Flow blockchain and the unique features that distinguish it from the many other projects out there. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining and we'll catch you in the next video.